Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the briefing of the MEC. We are looking at the 2023 online admissions placements period, which will uh, commence tomorrow. So we felt that we need to give you an idea on how we're going to be managing this process. We know this is a, a time where parents are anxious because they are looking for a space for their children. Uh, MEC will then take us through the process and uh, the later stage will be in a position to take questions from the media. Those that are joining online, you're welcome as well in our social media platforms. And during Q&A, you can just send us the, those questions. MEC and the HOD of the department will then be in a position to take us through that process. We are in uh, World School Menlo Park. Thanks very much for welcoming us. And let me see the opportunity is yours to brief the nation. Thank you so much, Steve. <clears throat> Truly appreciate the opportunity. Uh, let me start by thanking the school leadership for welcoming us here. Thank you so much. Uh, we truly appreciate that. Uh, the district. Uh, thank you so much, uh, district director. We, we really appreciate uh, the environment and the hospitality. Uh, I thought I was at the university campus and I was uh, yeah, thank you so much. Truly appreciate that. Uh, the leadership of the department, uh, led by our HOD, uh, thank you so much, HOD, and the team that is here. Uh, thanks, Steve. <clears throat> As we've indicated, Steve, uh, we started the online placement uh, <clears throat> almost seven years ago or so, um, and we tried to improve the system literally every year uh, so that we can be in a position to allocate uh, proper spaces within our schooling environment, especially for grade one and grade two. I just want to start by clarifying the purpose uh, so that everyone can be aware why we've taken this particular route, because I think many people feel that uh, we've taken this route uh, for purpose of frustrating them for purpose of uh, placing them with an unacceptable level of anxiety um, and many other things, you know. <clears throat> we come from an era where uh, our schooling system uh, was divided into two parts, uh, those that are privileged and those that are not privileged. Uh, with the opening of the 1994 breakthrough, people were countering many challenges. One, uh, the application forms could not be accounted to. Two, your surname can be used as a tool to eliminate you. Uh, three, uh, even before you enter the school premises, you are told the school is full. Uh, four, there was no accountability, which simply means even if we have deposited your application, uh, there was no accountability whether your application has been successful or not. You will rely at the mercy of the school to say it was successful or not. Lastly, which uh, um, created serious problems, uh, there are some schools that will have open days without advertising those open days. And if you miss to attend that open day, you could not be in a position to attend that school. And others use their own creative way uh, of requesting people to pay upfront either application fees or non-refundable amounts of money before you can even be given an application form. So our online registration is just an e-queuing system. Instead of queuing at one school, you are allowed to queue at five schools at the same time. You know, with human, with human capacity, you can't queue at five schools at the same time. So if you queue at one school and that school is full, you have lost throughout. 
but with online registration, you can queue at five schools at the same time. Um, your forms will be accounted for, your application will be accounted for, and we can be in a position to trace each and every application. So we've managed to conclude that process, uh, and we are quite excited uh, that last year alone we received 764,000 applications. Uh, it's a massive record. Uh, and for us to manage almost 764,000 applications, um, it indicates that we've grown as a department in terms of the capacity to manage this system. But secondly, it means that we've got the necessary skills within the department uh, to manage these numbers. Of, out of that 764,000, almost 330,000 were for grade one. Um, to us, it's a huge vote of confidence. If you have to fix the education system, uh, grade R, grade one uh, is the beginning. Uh, if we can attract uh, almost 330,000 applications within the public education space. It's very important. Within the public education space is an indication that there's a vote of confidence of public education uh, where young uh, 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 parents, young families uh, trust the public education system with their children. Um, because if you check the age of parents now, who are taking their children to grade one. These are young professionals. Uh, these are young people that have just got jobs. These are young people that prefer <coughs> the education system of Gauteng. So to us, it's a massive, massive, massive vote of confidence uh, that young, dynamic professionals believe public education is far above the private education in our country. We also received 457,000 applications for grade eight. Another vote of confidence of public higher education system uh, in our province. And to receive almost 500,000 uh, 500, applications for grade eight, uh, it's a massive investment uh, uh, in our education system and an assurance to our educators that they're doing well, but most importantly, the desire to improve our infrastructure uh, 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 investment. This 500,000 grade eight is also a vote of confidence that we are breaking the barriers of quality education across all spectrum of our society. A vote of confidence of our infrastructure investment. We've been opening new schools literally in areas where you don't expect the beautiful schools that we are building. So parents are now coming back uh, to enroll their children uh, in our beautiful schools and this 500,000 also is an investment uh, in, our inv uh, in our infrastructure uh, portfolio. But it also means we're starting to get the problem that we're struggling with, with developers right. Because developers will just develop a new uh, a human settlement. There is no school, there's no clinic, no transport. But with these numbers, it indicates that we are starting to speak the same language and we are trying to ensure that everyone can have a school closer to where uh, uh, they stay. So from the above applications, we have a total of 332,000 applications for grade one and 157,000 applications for grade eight. So tomorrow, uh, uh, tomorrow we are releasing what you call happy SMSs. Uh, happy SMS means as a parent, we are going to get an SMS that says, amongst the 764,000 people that have applied for spaces in our schools, you were fortunate that your child has been placed. So tomorrow we are releasing those SMSs uh, to all parents. And remember, we are releasing these SMSs until the end of November until the 30th of November. So if you didn't get the SMS tomorrow or on Tuesday or on Wednesday, don't panic. We are releasing them in batches and we are also releasing them uh, 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 literally every day uh, until uh, we've managed to conclude uh, this process. So all parents will get 
the SMSs. Um, we are starting with those that have been placed. We are also starting with those uh, that we feel they meet the criteria. You will see I'll go through the criteria so that even when parents receive these SMSs, uh, they must know the criteria that we have followed. The SMSs will be sent to the cell number or mobile number that you used uh, when you're making an application. Uh, but if we have lost that number, uh, you can still go to our website, uh, gdeadmissions.gov.za, using your credentials, uh, your login details. Uh, you will then be in a position to know whether your, your child has been placed or not. Uh, you know our website is www.gdeadmissions.gov.za. If also you have lost your credentials, because there are many people that forget their own passwords. Uh, I've made a joke about how to create a password. I don't want to go back there. Uh, but if you have lost your password, you go to the same website and you click on forgot uh, 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 password link and then you follow the prompt uh, you'll be in a position to then to reset your password and uh, you can check whether your child has been placed or not <clears throat> i want to emphasize this point if parents and guardians have not received an sms <clears throat> please don't panic um, we are releasing the first set of SMSs tomorrow, but the last SMS will be issued on the 30th of November. So don't panic that you want to buy school uniform for your child for uh, the following academic year, or you want to buy stationery. Uh, we'll be in a position to provide that information before the 30th of November, and on the basis of that, uh, you will know whether your child has been placed or not. This time, we want to urge parents, because the application came from you, it's you who applied. Uh, when you get an SMS that your child has been placed at school X, there is no need for you to go back to the website to click accept. No, no. Because you made an application, if you get an SMS, your child has been placed automatically. You don't have to do anything. Um, uh, you just have to know the name of the school where your child has been placed. Uh, that's the only thing, and that's the major improvement that we've put in the system. Because previously, we were waiting for parents to accept, and some of them were not accepting, and some of them either they've forgotten uh, the school they've applied, uh, they are surprised with the name of a school. Uh, so, so, so it created an administrative nightmare for us. Because we have to wait for parents to accept first before we can release the next batch. And waiting period used to drag. Uh, so we don't want to be caught in that um, problem again. So when we send an SMS to you, it's a confirmation. Pelile. Uh, so lona. You just accept and you'll prepare your child to go to that school uh, immediately. We've indicated that this is an <clears throat> electronic queuing system. Um, and therefore, there are various things that you might need that you've forgotten, uh, various information that you may need from us. So I want to share the following details with you. <clears throat> If you want to make any inquiry, um, uh, we are going to use uh, our call center number 0800-000-789. That's 0800-000-789. For all the inquiries on placements and where your child is placed or if you have not received an SMS, uh, you you want to know whether you are still going to receive an SMS. That is the number that needs to be called. I'm emphasizing this. The number is 0800 000 789. 
It's not Steve Mabona's number. It's a call center number. Uh, 0800-000-789. If you want to use a WhatsApp, we, we've also introduced a WhatsApp number, 60 0-60-891-0361. That's our WhatsApp number. If you feel the call center is delaying you, you can just WhatsApp us and the team will be in a position to respond. From tomorrow, we expect high volumes uh, of calls and WhatsApp, and we are calling on parents to be patient as we deal with this high number uh, of calls. <clears throat> what is the criteria that we've used this time to place learners? There are schools that receive high volumes of applications. I'll give you the top 10 of those schools. So one way or another, we must find a mechanism on how we select learners. Uh, because if a school can only accommodate 180 learners, and you get 3,000 applications. Uh, there's no way that uh, you can use a criteria because from 3,000 applications to select 180 is a difficult, difficult task. Uh, so this is the criteria that we are using. The first one, because we want to encourage people to learn closer to where they stay. So the first, first key criteria is home address. If you stay closer to the school, the better. Uh, it saves us a lot of troubles of transporting learners. It saves us a lot of uh, challenges if we need the parents to come to the school to attend parents' meeting. It ensures that our children participate in sporting activities because they don't have to arrive in the morning. After school, they have to leave. So, so the first criteria that we want to firm up is what we call home address uh, within the school feeder zone. The second one, if we have a sibling in that particular school, uh, will also prioritize you so that parents don't have to drop a child in one school, drive again, and drop another child in another school, drive again, drop another child in another school. So we use siblings. Um, and I know it's very difficult in South Africa to use siblings. Uh, different say names, different things. Uh, it's creating problems for us, but we are going to use siblings. Uh, and this information you provided us. So we are not thumbsucking the information. You said we've got a sibling in this school. The name of the sibling is XYZ, and we are using that information. The third criteria is work address. Uh, it's better to have a child closer to where the parent work uh, so that the parent can drop the child on their way to school, to, uh, to work, and then they can pick up the child uh, after work. So we're using that particular aspect. But in the interest of advancing access, transformation, building social cohesion, building strong non-racialism in our schools, we are also using what you call the 30-kilometer radius so that a child in Soweto must not be stuck with schools in Soweto. If they want to go and study in Sentin, they must be allowed to study in Sentin. A child in Tembisa, if they want to study in Binoni, they must be allowed to go to Binoni. If the parents can afford and if the parents believe it's the best school, uh, we'll allow that, including the home address that is within the 30 kilometer road. So that's the criteria that we, are, we have used to place learners. Uh, but as I said, you might meet this criteria and your child might not be placed on the basis that we have identified 275 high-pressure high schools, uh, primary schools, 275 primary schools uh, that received what I always term abnormal applications. Uh, abnormal applications means they have got and they can only take 180 learners. They've received more than 2,000 applications. So you might meet the criteria, but still not be placed. But there will be no child that will not get a school if the parents have applied. 
That is why we are asking for five schools. Uh, so that if you can't get placement uh, at your first school of choice, we can then check number two, we can check number three, number four, number five. Uh, so, so we've got 275 schools uh, that uh, receive abnormal applications in terms of primary schools, and 221 schools receive abnormal applications in terms of secondary schools. So these are the schools that, uh, and I've seen parents, uh, if, 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 if your child get admitted in this school, parents sometimes convene placement parties. So they even pop the champagne just to celebrate that their child uh, got placement. What are the top 10 schools with high enrollment uh, uh, in the area that we're in here? Uh, in Swan. The school with abnormal high enrollment, that is number one, is Lar School Acacia. And you'll understand where Lar School Acacia is. Uh, that there's new development there. Uh, uh, and uh, we have not moved well as a department to build new schools. Uh, so the school can only take 255 learners but we've received 1,538 applications. So more than 1,200 parents will not find placement there. So the school can only take 255 learners, but the school received 1,538 applications. So 1,200 people that have applied will not be placed in that school. And I know parents will say, why not my child? And I always ask, whose child must I take out to allow your child to be in that school? So it's a huge number. The second school is in Pretoria, not Lyre School, Teresa Park. They can only accommodate 210 learners. They've received 1,172 applications. So almost 1,000 learners will not be placed in Teresa Park. The second school in Pretoria North is Large School Rachel De Beers. They've got the capacity to accommodate 211 learners. They've received 1,138 applications. They are followed by a school in, in Jemestan, Palm Ridge Primary School, the capacity is 182. They can only take 1,072. Another school is in Boxback, Lakeside Primary School. They can only accept 160. They've received 957. Alston Primary School in Jemestan, they've got 200 capacity they can only take 951. The Albertin area is one area where we need to build more schools because Stone Ridge Primary School, Opel Verk Primary School, Alba View Primary Schools, they are under extreme pressure. So we will explain what we've done as a department to alleviate uh, this pressure. The most sought after school in our province is World School Langenhoven here in Pretoria North. That's the most sought after high school. They can only take 300, but they received 2,600 applications. So almost. 2,300 parents will not get placement in that school. I mean, 2,300 is two new schools. <laughs> it's two new schools. So it means around that area, we need to build two new schools uh, as a department. So that's our most sought after school uh, in our province. The second one, as I've indicated, the Alberton area, we have a problem there. It's Alberton High School, 
And Alberton High School has the capacity to take 210 learners. They received 2,488. So more than 2,000 parents, their children are not going to be accepted in Alberton High. That area as well, we need to build new schools because of the new development that is taking place in that area. When you go to Central Johannesburg, Parktown Boys High is the most sought after school. And they can only take 152 learners, but check how many applications they've received. With a capacity of 152, they've received 2,328 applications. 2,328 applications almost 2,100 parents that wants to take their children there, unfortunately, will not be in a position to take their children there. But this online application is assisting us to plan. That is why we are truly in love with the online application. So we know where parents want to take their children. So we're no longer going to build school for sake of building them. We'll build them where they are needed in communities where they're needed. If you go to the south, Johannesburg South, the most sought after school there, it's a John Adamson. They can only take 450 learners. They receive 2,152. The most sought after township school is in Jemestan, Pumlani Secondary School, in the township. They can only take 200 learners. We've got 2,228,000 applications that we've received in that particular area. I can tell you one of the reasons there is a language policy. You might find that school has taken three or four popular languages, and that is why people want to go to that particular school. When we come back to the Kissington area, GP High School for Boys. GP High School for Boys, they can take 220 learners. They've received 1,952 applications. So almost 1,700 parents, uh, their children will not be placed at GP High School for Boys. So what do we have? have we done as a department with this kind of pressures? <clears throat> there are two things. It takes long to build a new school, but it's easier and quicker to expand uh, or add additional classrooms in existing schools. So we've identified 599 additional classrooms. We've given money to the SGBs when online application started, we already knew where the numbers are. So the HOD has met with all the principals and the SGBs of these schools. We have given them money. They have started building additional classrooms inside those school premises. So in terms of primary schools, it's 599 additional classrooms. Uh, if we multiply that by 35 learners, it gives an idea. Uh, how many learners uh, will be accommodated. In terms of high schools, we've added 698 new classrooms uh, where schools are building on their own. It's faster, it's quicker, and it's safe. Uh, and it assists us to minimize uh, the challenges uh, that we are facing in terms of overcrowding. Sorry. Once more, I want to summarize. Placement of learners will start tomorrow when we release SMSs. We want parents to know that the offer we gave you is the offer that you will get. And if we have not received an SMS, you can go on our website, and our website will indicate whether you receive the SMS or not. We also encourage parents to call our toll-free number 0800-789-0800-000-789 if they need assistance or they can visit our district 
offices. Please don't visit schools. <clears throat> schools are closed. Schools are closed. Uh, so don't visit our schools. Don't go to our schools. Just call center, WhatsApp number, our website. We'll be in a position to assist you. If you need a personal touch, uh, you can go to our district office, and our district office will be in a position to assist you. The reason why we are in love with the online registration as well is that it has an objection and appeal process. Unlike when you queue at the school and you are told the school is full, <laughs> you can't appeal. You are told the school is full, so leave. <laughs> so with the online registration, the parent has the right to appeal. So you can object if you have placed your child at the school you don't want, but remember, we didn't thumb sack the school. You applied for that school. And if we say we can't accommodate your child, you can then appeal. Uh, 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 to the HOD, if you are not happy with the HOD, you can appeal to me and say, I don't want, I, I don't take your reasons why you, you didn't take my child. We will be in a position to review uh, your appeal and will attend to it. Remember, the process of getting the SMS will only go to those parents that have given us their valid proof of address. If you have not given us your valid proof of address, we don't know where you stay, so you can't place your child. It's only those that have uh, uploaded their proof of address or taken their proof of address to their schools uh, that will be in a position to provide that, uh, that information. And those that have missed the boat, which simply means when we closed the online registration, either they were staying in another province or they didn't apply or they were going through some personal challenges. The late registration is the 1st of December to the 15th of December. But remember, we are only going to do that and open that to the schools that still have uh, spaces eh? uh, that have spaces, but if they don't, uh, we'll not be in a position to provide that. So, we'll be in a position to assist you. Uh, Steve is screaming at me, so he'll clarify that point. We've also attached the list of all our district offices, uh, so 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 that parents must know where our offices are placed, um, and this information is also available on our website. Uh, and we'll be in a position to assist parents. But let me emphasize this point. As of tomorrow, if you have joined us late, we are releasing the placement SMSs to all parents that applied on time using our online registration for grade one and grade eight. We received 764,000 applications. Of that, 330,000 are for grade one and 457 are for grade eight, and we'll release the SMSs tomorrow until the 30th of November. So even if you didn't get the SMS tomorrow, don't panic. Uh, we are releasing these SMSs in batches, and the last day of releasing those SMSs is the 30th of November. After the 30th of November, if you have not received an SMS, uh, that's when you can be in a position to contact us and contact us through uh, 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 our website. Secondly, contact us through uh, our district office or through our WhatsApp number or our call center number. Thank you so much. Thanks for your attention, Steve. You can come to uh, 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 if you want to take uh, questions. We'll be ready. Thanks. Thank you very much, MEC. We will now take the questions from the media. Um, let's move that side. Can you move Max that side?
Okay. I'll, I'll, you are one, Matlaku. I'm at two. Only two. Okay, you are three. Pull me four. Only five. So you must remember your numbers. Yes. Just press it. Kaku Koman. I just wanted to find I just wanted to find out, MEC, um, the high numbers. Let, let's, let's talk about the schools that, you know, we've been having this conversation. You speak specifically about Alberton. There was tear gas and stuff like that. What are the actual plans in place, specifically speaking to uh, the Alberton area, as well as uh, Tuane North, I think, is it, is it called that, Acacia and Teresa Park and so forth, because it's also quite problematic. We saw similar issues that took place there about just before COVID as well. And um, I also wanted to find out, second question, uh, in terms of the way the system works. So um, if, you, if I were a parent, I'll, I'll give you an example. If I was a parent and I wanted to apply to Northcliff High, let's use Northcliff High, and I live three kilometers away from the school, given because there are other parents as well, and now the school is full, what is going to happen to me as, as you know, what is, how, how does the system work like that when there's three other schools, but I don't make the criteria in terms of my nearest school? Where do you take me? Do you still take me within the zone? Do you take me 20 kilometers away? Uh, how is the system designed for, you know, parents have, that have um, those type of queries? Thank you. Morning, MEC. It's uh, Ahmed Kaji from uh, Newsroom Africa. Um, uh, just uh, the first question is regarding the formal proof of address. Um, how does this then work for learners living in informal settlements? And then uh, the second one, just a point of clarity: um, when parents receive acceptance offers, um, does this mean they shouldn't go onto the website to accept? Can I just get clarity on that? Thanks very much. Good day, MEC and the department. I'm Ariska from The Citizen. I just want to know, are we ready for the matric results this year? Are we geared up and ready for that? Good morning, Pumzile from SABC Radio. Uh, MEC, I see we haven't touched on the issue of grade R's. I mean, most of these schools still have grade R's. We've got parents who took their kids, uh, in preparation for grade one, and they are not guaranteed that they will be accepted at that school. How are you planning to address that? I mean, parents have bought you know, sc school uniform uh, in preparation for their kids to go to that particular school. So I want to understand the logic regarding that as to why do they still not be placed at the school whereas they were prepared there? And as well as on the issue of Pretoria North, we know that there's pressure there. Why is it taking you so long to address those issues and build schools in that area? Thank you. Uh, you said parents are given pr uh, five options. Does this mean that the department will be only working with the five options, or will the, uh, is there a possibility of parents being placed outside the options, especially because previously um, parents raised concerns that the department placed learners outside their preferred options and there were financial burdens that they had to incur. Uh, in terms of the appeal process, what does that entail, and how long does it take? The uh, second question was just a point of uh, clarity, please. Um, when a parent receives a confirmation SMS, do they need to go onto the website or do they not? Thank you very much.
Uh, the HOD is met with the principals who are adding additional classes as, as an entry measure. We are also putting the mobile classrooms as an entry measure. But the key thing there is to build, <coughs> sorry, is to build a new school. Um, and we think that, that now that it's in our plans, it will assist us to alleviate that pressure. Well, we are not leave examples, a typical example that majority of parents are facing. I think uh, 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 um, it relates to the same question Humulimo uh, uh, raised it as well. If you are, we want to take your child to not leave her, it's food. Mm -hmm. Uh, where do we take you? We have to take you to the nearest school to not leave high. If that school is also full, where do we take you? We have to look at another school that is closer to you until we find a school to you. It's a debate that uh, uh, those that are opposed to <laughs> our thinking uh, are forgetting. And I'm glad that you are raising that. You know with the current Bella bill <laughs> in Parliament where the DA, the Western Cape, are saying the decision to place a child must lie with the SGB. If the SGB of Notlify says we are full, where must the parent go? Must come to the HOD. <laughs> to say, HOD, I applied there, but the school says it's full. Can you find a placement for me? And that's our argument, that if the school is full, that responsibility must now lie with the HOD, and if the parents is not happy with what the HOD uh, or where the HOD is playing is placing their child, they have the right to apply to appeal to the MEC. That's what we are arguing. Uh, but obviously, uh, uh, those that feel that we are taking the powers of the SGB feel that is the SGB must decide. And if it says full, they don't have a helicopter view of other schools that might not be full. But the HOD has that helicopter view of other schools that might have a placement. That is why we really believe that the HOD uh, still needs to play that particular role. Ahmed, I think the proof of registration will be shocked and be surprised. In the informal settlement, we don't have a problem. Uh, they comply. We don't have a problem there. Uh, either the counselor writes them a, a, a letter or they use the nearest uh, building. That is an address. For example, if you live in an informal settlement, there is a spa next to it. You can use the address of the spa uh, as your home address, uh, and then we'll know that you stay around that area. So we don't have a problem. Uh, we have a problem with people that have physical address. But what they do, they go to an uncle or a brother that stays somewhere and say, borrow me your home address. Uh, and if you borrow them their home address, they don't know we've got internal databases that we utilize. You can't have a home address in Alberton on the day of application, but your home address in terms of a bank statement is in Tembisa. It does not make sense. Uh, because we've got access to other databases that use your address. So we can see if you are trying to forge an address. Uh, but also some schools are very creative. They do their own spot checks. They go to the address that you've given and say, do you have a child of this, uh, with this name? And you find the poor uh, a, a grainy or, 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 or domestic worker says, no, 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 there's no person. I'm the domestic worker. I know all the children here. Uh, so, so we have a way of proving. Uh, it's just that people try to cheat the system and we're picking up all those things. The HOD will, 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 will uh, uh, deal with the confirmation. But we say when we give you a confirmation SMS, there's no need for you to, to go to our website or to do any other thing. When you receive the con because you applied. We are giving you the school that you, you said you want to take your child there. So we agree with you. We are taking your child there. So no need for you uh, 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 to do any other thing. Pumzile. Grade R use different admission criteria, and not every parent can take their child to a grade R center. Take for an example, your child grade R is Acacia Lair School, but there's another grade R center outside the school, <laughs> or a crash outside the school. So they must be disadvantaged because you are inside, they are outside. The same children. 
It's the same children. So if you have a crash outside, <laughs> or four crashes outside, and we have an ECD center inside the school, what rule compels you to say those that are inside the school must be automatic and those that are outside the school must? Fairness will mean let's all queue and apply. <laughs> Fairness will mean that. Let's all queue and apply. But also, what about the parent that does not afford to take their children to Education started at grade one. So those that can't afford grade R, they must be excluded in the education system because those that can afford can place their child above them and then get automatic space. So the system say, let's queue at the same time, all of us. And if you queue at the same time, all of us, and indeed your child is already at Acacia, it will be a plus. We'll take that into consideration. That's, that's our argument. But to say, because I'm here first, no one else, I don't think that is proper. Uh, I really don't think it's proper. It's discriminatory. It excludes other people. And what do you mean? People will cherry pick the ECDs that they want in terms of grade one and take their children there. You find that they don't qualify in terms of distance. They don't qualify in terms of sibling. They don't, so they will cheat the system. So when we say grade R learners will queue at the same time, all of them, we believe that's the, the fairness that we can practice uh, within the system. Yes, we are ready for grade uh, 12s. Uh, we've got the highest number of matriculants that have registered this year. Uh, we, 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 we are taking all our children this school holidays to <clears throat> various camps. So they're already there, uh, but our schools are ready. By the time they come back, uh, we think uh, they will be ready to, to write metric. Um, but we are ready. Uh, we'll have a proper briefing. Uh, they're starting on the 31st of October. Uh, so so uh, we still have a month or so uh, to, to, to conclude that process. I think 28 days, Steve, or so, uh, to conclude that process. HOD? <coughs> a question by Kaji in respect of the proof of SMS website and so on. Let's clarify. Firstly, at a point of, from tomorrow, the 3rd, through to November, parents will receive an SMS on a gradual basis, on an incremental basis. That SMS will give you an option that you are your child is placed. In the event that your child is placed and you do not object to the placement, you don't have to do anything. But there may be an instance where a child is placed, but you remember you had five choices, but school five may place your learner, but not school one, in terms of the number of schools to which you have applied. You might, in, in, in such a case, that's where you may want to log in and, and, and lodge an appeal, or I, I, until such time that with a view that maybe school number one of choice may be offering you a place. It is in that context that we wanted to clarify. There, there's a matter that we also want to stress in respect of late applications. When the MEC was making a presentation, he spoke of the date of the 1st to the 15th of December. That date of the 1st to the 15th of December applies only to persons who have not submitted proof of residence. In the event that you had not submitted proof of residence and you have it, and but, but now because we're dealing with, uh, with placement, we will only be able to open up the system for you from the 1st to the 15th of December to upload the necessary required documentation or evidence of that proof of residence. It is only that time, during that time, from the 1st to the 15th, as it relates to late applications, this will, we will only deal, we, we are currently dealing with those that have applied on time. We have not thought about those that are applying late because the system was open for a long time, but hopefully in the, in the new year, we may consider given what may be coming our way. Thanks, thanks. Thanks, Steve. Uh, okay. Um. Are we done?
all sorted. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks very much. That brings the end of the presentation. Thank you. Thank you.